Hey, you guys, welcome back to the Narrow Urethra podcast. With me always is my co host, Mr. Davidson Sim. How you doing there, Davidson? Good, just trying to stay healthy. <laughs> uh, this is a very special podcast because we are doing it all through Skype. And this is actually the first podcast that we actually will be adding a uh, video to it. I don't know where I'm, I don't know if I'm going to create a YouTube channel for it or, but we have videos so you get to see their beautiful faces. And today our special guests are Neil. I'm pointing at Neil. What's up, guys? How you guys doing? Hey, Neil, what's up, what's up? Is, your, is your vehicle fro- is your uh, is your video frozen or is it on my side? Is that my side? Yeah, he's moving. He's blinking. He's blinking. I'm just oh, no, not moving not. around. <laughs> <laughs> and our other special guest is Mr. Alex. Alex, how are you doing today, sir? Very well. Very well. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for joining us on our podcast. And as always, this is the intro. Okay, so uh, this is the Narrow Youther Podcast where we lightly talk about King of the Hill, but mostly just talk about random nonsense. But that seems to work for us, right, Davidson? Yeah, we've got how many episodes are we in? Uh, this is the, I want to say this is the sixth episode. So we're six episodes in talking about nonsense. Here we go. <laughs> There's, uh, I actually have a little bit of special news. Uh, I'm not going to say who it is yet, but on the next episode, we actually have a voice actor from the original cast. Ooh. What? Yes. Oh, whoa. I've been acting. Man. You know, I, you know this, this whole COVID thing, is, is, is it sucks, but it's also a blessing because there are a ton of people out there that aren't doing much of anything. You know, so like you reach out to somebody, he's like, you reach out to somebody, he's like, hey, are you bored? You, you want to talk about something that a lot of people love? It's like, oh, yeah, fine, sure. So it's, 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 it's all coming down to a scheduling thing. So that's going to be a very fun special episode. Uh, I'm really excited. So that'll be really cool. But uh, this is, uh, well, we'll start off with, we'll start off, Neil. This is your first time on the podcast. Uh, first, introduce yourself and uh, tell us uh, your first experience with the King of the Hill universe. Oh, my name's uh, Neil. Um, I've known you guys for how many years now? Uh, I can't 2013. Even remember, but, I think 2013, um, yeah. Since middle school. <laughs> oh, you, yeah. You know, <laughs> since well, middle school. Well, since middle school, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I used to play trumpet with this dude until, like, he vanished out of nowhere. <laughs> that was like, Washington, like, Washington, Washington, right? Reappe- yeah. We reappeared. And around, we reappeared. Uh, what do you call it? We resynced, like, in uh, five years ago or something like that. It was, yeah, it was 2013. Yeah. Uh, like, did you know when yeah. we when we met each other at Frankenstein's Davidson? Did you know that he was? Did you know he was from Oxnard or who he was? Nah, man, I barely recognize yeah, him. We, we had to we had to re meet each other pretty much again. I mean, it was like um, I stood in line with Jez, and you know he was a he was just a a delight to talk to. A about delight, a, ver- a very delightful to. talk. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was. It was fun. And then I think we just kind of like we we clicked, and we were like, "Oh, you're from Oxnard," and then we had a mutual friend with yeah. Jim. That, that, Jim went actually went to prom with you. I was like, "What? Our homecoming was yeah, it prom or homecoming?" So, yeah. Yeah, I went to uh, prom, prom with Jim then one year, and then yeah, and then like I guess Jezra was just like, "Hey, do you know Neil?" And Jim was like, "Yeah, I know Neil." <laughs> and then, so, yeah, then that's, that's the, the person that brought us all together was actually the Black Ranger from Power Rangers. That's amazing feeling, you know. Oh yeah, Walter Jones, Walter Jones. But um, back to your question about uh, sorry, that's my son. Totally just... That's fine. It's it's well, gonna to, play into uh, the uh, the theme the today. Thing. Yeah. Uh, Back to the question of the King of the Hill. I mean, to be very honest, I, I mean, I know about the show. I've I've uh, seen a couple of episodes, but I haven't really watched an episode until you. Oh, you know what? Then this is perfect. So this could be an underlining theme, like a a a, a second plot to the whole story, because uh, Alex also has hasn't seen King of the Hill before. So it's like we're popping your oh, cherries, man. We're popping your King, King of the Hill, of the Hill cherries. virgins. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, Talk, actually, dude, it's it's so funny. It, it's actually really funny. Yeah. I mean, it just you got that dynamic with it because you. I, you told me to go ahead and watch some uh, because I think we're talking about father son thing and the dynamic between um, um, Hank and Bobby is hilarious. I mean, it's just like it's like you know, it looks like it, it uh, from what I can see from the first couple of episodes that I've watched, even though they were, they were out of order, is more of like uh, it looks like life lessons from 
a guy that sells propane pretty yeah. much. <laughs> just, <laughs> Life yeah. lessons between him and his son and like the group of friends and I see it and I'm definitely definitely gonna watch for awesome, it. It's, awesome. it's a great show. Also yeah. we have Alex who is also uh new to the King of the Hill universe. Alex, introduce yourself and tell us about your first experience with King of the Hill and was it gentle, was it rough, was it, did you have a good time or do you regret it? Are you gonna do it again? <laughs> Yeah, my name is Alexis. I've known these guys for a very, very long time as well. Um, just like Neil, I haven't watched King of the Hill, but I do know of it. Uh, the only oh, we lost one about oh, uh, uh, the video gaming, uh-huh. the video gaming one. Um, <laughs> and it's, it was very, it was very, very entertaining. Oh, what does it uh, I, I, I work IT, so it kind of like blends in with like computer science and all that stuff a bit, and so. Mm. It was a fairly interesting episode, a uh, fairly accurate. Uh, yeah, and another one, so another one. I, w- I, w- I was gonna give you is this one. Uh, was it MySpace or Facebook? Yeah, I think it was MySpace. It was a little, is a little dated, but uh, there's a MySpace episode that King of the Hill or Hank Hill, and uh, he encountered the craziness of social media, and I think that that would be another fun episode for you to watch. But, but you, yeah. you'd say you enjoyed it, like the the comedy was your pace and everything was it made sense yes. to you, even though like you're jumping in from it from a random episode. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, me and me and uh, past five episodes, me and Davidson have been talking about a lot of King of the Hill. Ed, but if I if I don't know if you guys have listened to our previous podcast, we talk about it a little bit and then we kind of venture off into a little anecdotes about our our, our, our lives or any our experiences. And I think that's that's the fun part. I do often po- after I'm done posting it, I'll post it. Uh, on uh, King of the Hill pages, and a lot of the a lot of the running gag, a lot of the running comments from those is that man, you guys like barely talked about King of the Hill, but I still loved it. So I mean, that's fun. I think I like a, a like if I, I, there is a King of the Hill podcast where they go through each episode and like dissect it. Um, initially, yeah, I, yeah. when I talked to Davidson, initially that was our plan, but then it felt it felt very. <sighs> I don't know. It it would have it would have been draining, and I think that this mm. th- this way this one month uh, one podcast a month type themed episode is, will work better. Um, what do you think, Davidson? No, I think it's been working well. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's always just fun talking about King of the Hill because uh, from our like on our side, me and Davidson watched a lot of King of the Hill when we were in our cosplay days, so we just have it running in the background as. <laughs> as white noise and it kind of i don't know in a, in a weird way it motivated us to make costumes and it, it, it makes no sense to us but it, it, it did i think that uh, uh it was just why, uh, why king of the hill though right cosplay. Oh. Why king of the hill? i don't davison can you answer that what, what's the reason uh, i think just the pace of the uh the shows are, you know, there, there's not a lot of coherency in the episodes, right? So <laughs> wherever, wherever you are, like even if you lose focus, right? I mean, you can, uh, uh, something funny happens and you can pay attention right away and enjoy it for what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, there's, there, you're, you're, it's not like a, a movie or a, uh, you know, or a, a series, uh, you know, a, a series where it has like a, a really like, a storyline that you need to stay on top of, otherwise you kind of get lost. Yeah. And you have to backtrack and all that. And so, you don't, you don't it, have it, to have your eyes on the screen. Stuff. Yeah, you don't have to have your eyes on the screen too much to yeah. to understand the story. I think for me, right. that's what that's, it is. That's kind of like me in the office. I have, I have because Greg Daniels also yep. produced. Uh, Greg, yeah, Greg Daniels also uh, produced King of the Hill. So. It's yeah. also fun. I'm, that, I'm ex- that's one reason. That's actually one reason why I wanted to get King into King of the Hill because Greg Daniels. I mean, those jokes are very, very similar to like mm-hmm. it's like Greg Daniels style, and, and that's kind of why I'm watching it. I remember before when uh, King of the Hill was just kind of like not really just kind of out, but it was like midway through uh, how many seasons they had. I was just like, uh, it, it reminds me too much of Beavis and Butthead, but it's not Beavis and Butthead yeah. because it's Mike Judge. Oh. Well. Yeah. So yeah, and I mm. watching Beavis and Butthead, and I wanted to, you know, if I'm going to see that kind of uh, that kind of art, then uh, you know, I want to see, you know, breaking the law. But yeah, I mean, I, things change as you got older, and then uh, yeah, it's actually a very, very funny show. Uh, speaking wow. speaking on Greg Daniels, he actually has another new series that he has on uh, Amazon Prime. It's called Upload. Have you guys heard of it? No, I have not. 
it is a we- it's it's a weird Sounds- concept. So it's like this concept where uh, this person dies, like he he dies at the beginning of the season, and his uh, consciousness and his uh, himself really it gets uploaded to this virtual world. So he li- he lives on, mm. he lives on. Uh, it's got uh, what's his what's his name? He's the cousin of uh, of Stephen Amell, Robbie Amell. Um, he was in a lot of different shows. If you see his face, you'll recognize him. But it's it's Greg Daniels, and you. I haven't watched the first episode yet, but you through the trailer, you see, you feel the the Greg Daniels in it. You feel like you'll you'll get that humor from it. And I think it's. I'm gonna watch it. I'm awesome. pretty excited of watching. It's just finding the time to sit down, which is weird because we have plenty of time on our hands, you know, <laughs> due to this whole thing. What what have you guys so, been? What so have good. you guys been doing to uh, stay sane during this whole pandemic? Um, anyone want to go first? I mean, I don't want to talk about everyone. <laughs> Alex, Let our guest we'll go, go first. first. Yeah. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, okay. Uh, A for oh. Alex. A for Alex. Uh, well, for me, uh, it's pretty much been the same other than the new uh, procedures being held at my job, which mm-hmm. is for the county. Uh, so I've been going in in the mornings for half days uh, to make sure that uh, all county employees that are under my care, they continue to receive uh, their paychecks because two of my agencies deal with the financials of the entire county. Right. So I go, I go in every day. To make uh, and then if there's nothing there that I need to handle physically, then I go finish the day remotely. So it hasn't really been that different of my routine in the morning. So I still get up, still get ready, still put on the uniform, uh, mm, that's cool. and head out. Uh, it's just seeing the world uh, with less people in it is <laughs> pretty. Uh, I, bet, I bet it's easier Alex, getting home. Weird. Right? Do you keep the uniform on when you telework? <laughs> uh, no. No, it, it changes to a Jedi robe and then the Zoom meetings. That's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> with a lightsaber in hand. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes I, I've been doing a lot of like it, video, video interviews for Screen Rant and stuff, and I, sometimes I I'll just be wearing regular shorts, but like a button up shirt, right. but just regular shorts. Right. Like, why am I going to be uncomfortable? You know, when they can't even see what's below what's below the waist. You know. Um, Neil, how about you? It's very true. Um, let's see. Uh, I have my new son, which is pretty much she's about almost 17. Oh, he wants me. Perfect timing, Zach. What's up, man? I have up, this man? Um, you know, playing with him and pretty much interacting. Yeah, he's trying to turn on the TV right now. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, this thing, uh, working, doing some just book work on our facilities, Aww. and uh, luckily uh, I could be home for a little bit. Yeah. Um, and every uh, once in a while, we get to uh, jump on some war zone, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, dude! Oh my gosh, such a bu- I mean, it's a blessing and a curse because it keeps me busy. But then again, it gets me too. It keeps me too busy where I forget to do things I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like that one episode that uh, with uh, Hank. Oh, exactly got, the got Grand Theft the episode. Game. That's that's why that's why I was like laughing so hard at that. I was like, oh my god! <laughs> you're literally li- yeah, yeah. you're living that episode right now. That's what, what that's was, what's happening. Yeah, so I funny. I think everyone's that living episode. that episode, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> what is it? Animal Crossing. Oh Duty, man. Uh, what, what, what? Final that. Fantasy Seven. Those yeah. are the names I've been hearing uh, it's throwing oh, yeah. out there more often. Yeah, it, more often than there, not. There, there, there's like be. lines in the ground, and everybody's divided into those groups. You got the Animal Crossing. You got the. Oh yeah, yeah. I I actually have Animal Crossing too, but you I do? mean I just haven't been playing it just because it's it's uh it takes a lot for me to sit down in one spot Yo. for such a long time to do stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I I can't I can't sit down sometimes unless the only thing I can keep me sitting down is literally Warzone because you can't. <laughs> you know, you can't take your eyes off the screen. Hey, Bob, don't fit. see. And then uh, keeps, for you, keeps, Davidson, I know that busy. you're not really stuck at home. You're all over the place right now. How How's that going for you? Mm, I mean, it's oh, just the normal days. I think the, the thing that makes it, uh, you know, it's, it's just working. I mean, it's not, nothing much has changed. It's uh, Traffic's you know, better? Uh, Traffic is uh, actually pretty good. Like yeah. you know, I think that's the, mm-hmm. that's the that's the part that's uh, improved or uh, like kind of improved quality of life a little bit. But it's been mu- it's been much more busy lately, just because uh, I feel like when everyone's everyone's thrusted at home, there's like a panic to like get work done when everyone's at home. So I feel like a lot more you know they, they rely on you know the good people you know, the, the good people to 
carry a little bit more weight, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel I feel like uh, that, that's a situation for everybody, especially a lot of people working home. You you you're under the you're under the impression that it's going to be easier because you don't have to leave your house, but uh, the pressure is on because I think like a lot of uh, a lot of stuff gets uh, pushed forward and they want to get things done by a certain time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's a little bit of pressure since everyone is on telework to prove that you're getting stuff done while on telework yeah so it's i feel like yeah i was like man telework's only fun when you're like the only one doing it yeah like when everyone else is doing it everyone else is just like it's more annoying because you know back when we're in the (laughs) office you can people can come up to you and just ask you that question now your phone's blowing up like every second or you you know now you have have twice as many emails what's that alex you know my viewpoint is different because I'm on the back end of all of this, <laughs> of all, all this telework. Oh, that's so. right. Yeah. yeah, I actually, I actually don't mind, um, don't mind emails just because I mean it literally like if I forget what they say, I can revert back to it versus you know, talking on, on the phone. Yeah. I prefer, I prefer emails rather than phone yeah. calls to be honest, just because it's in writing. If there's a mistake, it's your fault because it's right there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, you guys, I, I appreciate you guys yeah. making time for the podcast, and I, you know. I, I, I see it as oh we get to talk about uh, talk about random things and get to catch up so I think that's also a, a benefit I, I don't speak to you guys uh, you know daily so it, it and you know it, it's it's yeah. it's hard it's hard it's hard to keep in touch when you can't you know make the effort to drive out or go go see each other yeah. you know what I mean so it, this is also fun mm-hmm. but uh, yeah it's actually you can really say, nice you can to see what is it. Yeah, oh, I'm just, just saying what you've you uh, been doing. Oh, what have I been doing? Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. well, yeah, yeah. So I'm still doing. I'm still doing my regular day job. Uh, we're considered essential, which is fine. Like I spend most of my time in the office, anyways. But also with with uh, my entertainment stuff, I've been doing a lot of that um, from home and doing it through Skype or through Zoom. Uh, Zoom. Uh, people are just using Zoom a lot now. I, I think it's just a um, yeah. Yeah, Zoom is uh, coming up. I mean, wherever. I mean, people should invest in that. Yeah, I, I like. I've just been watching a lot of uh, even national television. A lot of people are shooting from home. Uh, one of the most interesting things is I bought a new camera, and I I was I was wanting to connect it to my uh, computer to live stream. But uh, there's a thing Elgato makes. It's called a Cam Link, and those things are sold out everywhere. And the only place you can get them on cam, is Cam Link. Cam Link, yeah. So what it is, it's like a USB, uh, a USB attachment that you plug in, and you can plug in an HDMI cord into it, so you can uh, have a camera input out uh, into the uh, computer. Mm. Um, so Elgato actually sold out of them because so many people are trying to live stream and do broadcasting from home and all you can get is you can only get them on eBay and people are like making it quadruple the price which is like you know what fuck you guys for doing that shit but you know mm-hmm. I can't say that because I'm I'm the type of a person that would probably do that too if I if I jumped on that opportunity cuz you know yeah, it's, but the, it's, price, the price it's, gouging is insane yeah it's oh insane insane but I mean it's uh, I mean what is that that's supply and demand so I mean uh, I've been doing a lot of that. I've been uh, working a lot, uh, working a lot of stuff from home. Doing uh, uh, those tick. I've been uh, addicted to TikTok, making some fun TikTok videos and watching. Dude, it's like uh, it's like Vine back in the day, where you just start watching it and then you just get lost for a little bit. So yep. I have to try to. Uh, it, it's uh, it's literally another form of Vine. A lot of these things are different yeah. forms, but they're literally the same kind of platform. Yeah, I mean, it's the same recording. platform. Yeah, pretty much it. Right, pretty yeah. much it. So yeah, it's I like mean, Snapchat. That's uh, that's what I've been, and, and then of course, uh, video games here and there. I tried not to play it too much, but I also uh, I ordered a punching bag because I'm gonna try to get get some get some fitness in while we're you know we're stuck at home, you know. So <laughs> so yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, to, to, I, it's it's ridiculous. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's really hard. Home. I mean, there's food all the time. Like, yeah all the time it's getting really hard to to just like keep <laughs> keep fit you know and, that, and, and, and you got you got delivery services that are just like i mean oh you know sometimes you're just like oh who cares i'll pay the extra 15 dollars to get it delivered and, yeah but you know it's yeah, so I mean, if you it? want sushi, you could still get sushi if you want without leaving your house yeah, which last, is ridiculous last I mean, week you, you got know, korean barbecue like, I mean, right what's that last week you got korean barbecue 
Yeah, dude. Well, I mean, we had to call it and we picked it up. I mean, Jen doesn't, uh, Jen doesn't um, uh, deliver, but I mean, you just put in the order and then they give it in. Wow. It's a sweet deal. Very, very it's good awesome. enough for two to three people, 22 bucks. That's, yep. a, that's not a bad deal at all. That is awesome. So Already uh, cooked or you have to cook it yourself? This one is all the already cooked plate, but then you can also buy the beets per pound, depending on, you know, and then obviously they're different. Uh, uh, so uh, different. one running theme in, in the show is a uh, 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 meat because uh, Hank is a propane oh, salesman. Uh, how do you guys, how do you guys take your meat? Dave said, don't answer. Oh, don't answer. It's bloody and rare, man. I love rare. the rare stuff. I really? love the rare stuff. Rare? Oh. Like I, I, I don't, I don't mind it when I cut into it and there's a puddle of blood on yeah. my plate. Yeah. Okay. okay. Alex. Okay, exactly. The same. Then, yeah. All right. I, See. I all right. Then, then you're. Then you, you guys, good, you guys can good. stay on this podcast. You guys are in good company. If you guys were to say "well done," I'm, I'm gonna like immediately kick one of you out of the yeah, out dude, of the conversation. Jesse about to hold the key button down on someone. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. Like chewing on chewing on tires. <laughs> It's a running thing. I hope I hope after I hope after this podcast that you guys continue watching like maybe starting from the beginning and watching the episodes cuz I I feel like it sure. it's it, you're going to really enjoy it. You're definitely going to really enjoy it. Uh one of the the, yeah. the theme that I kind of wanted to touch on uh this week was um uh the father-son dynamic between Hank and and, and Bobby yeah. mainly because um Mainly because uh, bo- uh, two of you in here are our fathers and are experiencing it from different from different angles. Uh, Davidson, you've been doing this for a few years now, and Neil, you're relatively new to this. And uh, a lot of a lot of the things that I enjoy yeah. about the show is um, uh, the, 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 the the dynamic between uh, Hank and Bobby. Mainly because um, they're very different people. Now, for you guys. Growing up, were you guys very relatively uh, the same type of person as your as your father? Relatively, uh, like as interest. I'm stubborn, like my dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's a little, there's a little part of me that shows a little stubbornness that my dad has that does reflect onto me, and you know, it's not, it's not really the greatest, but the the whole stubbornness about it is that, um, or the thing that I like about it is that I don't like giving up without a fight, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Did you guys have a lot of? You uh, know, my things dad, that... like he, my dad said. Okay. Did you guys have a lot of stuff in common growing up? Uh, growing up, no, no, no. My dad was an immigrant. I mean, he just knew, you know, he he was an immigrant. He was like, like down in uh, down in Oxford, where we're from. I mean, a lot of the Filipinos were neat, like they were in the navy, just like uh, just like Davidson's dad, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Right, right. So a lot of them, like you know, they 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 got accustomed to the American life like really early on. My dad was, you know, he wasn't part of that, so he just had his friends and everything like that. I mean, one thing I like about my dad is that he always had like uh he would always have compadres you know so mm-hmm. to speak and then you know that kind of rubbed off on me i loved having being around my friends too and my dad would hang out with his friends and then i ended up doing too as like my friends like we really could my friends would come over and we would literally just barbecue for no apparent reason i mean that's what my dad did with his friends mm-hmm. and that kind of rubbed off on me and it was nice because i mean i saw how my dad was and then i mean it, i liked it you know like he loved having his friends around i liked having my friends around um a lot of the stuff that i ended up liking is because it was a it was a part of what my dad did like i like cars my dad works on cars i like the boat i like i really like to boat go boating and fishing because my dad did mm-hmm. it um we used to have a boat too so a lot of the stuff kind of projected me a little less because of the experiences my dad did. My dad didn't necessarily say, "Hey, you should try this." I just kind of just like you know tagged along, and it it was just so much fun camping too as well. So yeah, yeah. How about you, Alex? Were you and your dad uh, really close, or did you guys have a lot of stuff in common growing up? Uh, just like with the Neil story, um, dad's retired Navy, uh, so he instilled a lot of uh, discipline. Because of his military background, um, okay, yeah. a lot of respect. Um, his father, my grandfather, uh, was a carpenter, so he's very handy around the house. So, mm-hmm. oftentimes when I do want to hang out That's with dope. my friends, my dad would uh, force me, literally, uh, when I was younger, to watch him build stuff, work on the car, uh, fix an electrical <laughs> thing, and I would, I would. I would rebel because I didn't want to do that at the time. But now when I'm older, I'm like, I get it. 
Yeah. I get it, Dad. All right. Uh, I get, get why you did it, so I'm not afraid <laughs> to open a circuit box uh, like some of these other men that I see yeah. around here that need to call everybody to fix something, and I can just do it. So um, that's yeah, my relationship yeah. with my dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a, a, a good running theme from the show is because a lot of Hank and Bobby's relationship was like that. Um, I don't think we got to experience uh, what uh, b the man Bobby was g growing up to be and to see if he was going to uh, become his father. But uh, uh, Davidson, mm -hmm. Davidson, you, you, you watch the show, uh, you know, as much as I have. Um, what is something that you appreciate uh, about their relationship, about the dynamic between uh, Bobby and Hank? Uh, I think one of the things that's really important to draw from there is that uh, there's the son learning from his father, but then there's the father also learning from his son, mm -hmm. right? right? It's a generation. I mean, I think that's important for, uh, you know, us as millennials, right, we're kind of, we have this, I would say, kind of a clash between our prior, uh, was it our uh, our baby boomers or whatever, mm -hmm. our, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, n n coming to age now, I think we're starting to have clashes with the generation below us, uh, what is it, the, uh, the Gen, Gen Zers Z? or yeah, whatever Gen Z. they are? Gen, Gen Z. Yeah. Gen Z, right? Uh, there's there's everything between taste of music to how you know sensitivity and PCness yeah. I mean, and and all and all that that's all coming together right and I, I think what's important uh, you know what I learned from King of the Hill is that you know generational gaps exist no matter what right mm -hmm. I mean even the boomers have to deal with their with theirs right but I think it's important to show like empathy between both right be understanding and open minded because. You know, that, that, that's kind of our way to drive ourselves forward and to keep growing, right? Yeah. If, we, uh, if we stay stuck in our old ways, I get it, you know, tradition, nostalgia. We like that everyone has their definition of the, the golden, the golden years, the golden age and of whatnot, because, you know, the, it, it brings us back to a time when things felt, felt you know, like uh, we were, we were invincible, mm -hmm. but, you know, going, I mean, we're never, we're, we're not going backwards, we're going we're, we're always trudging forward. Yeah. And, you know, to, to, uh, there, there, are, as you watch a lot of these episodes, you'll see little instances where Hank is just like, huh, like, yeah. that, that, that's not too bad. I mean, the, the Four Scores yeah, episode yeah. where he was, uh, listening to, he was just like bashing all, all the music that Bobby's in. He's like, what kind of smut filth is this? Like, hmm, what's this? <laughs> four, four score? You know, <laughs> and, have you ever come little, across little, situations where, light. where you and Davidson, where you're listening to what the type of music David uh, DJ was listening to, and you're just like uh, felt a little disconnected from it. Not really. I mean, I, I think I try to be as open minded as I possibly can. You know, like I mean, I would say that I've had disconnects within my own generation yeah. on music, right? So I got to learn from that, and same thing as we go forward. You know, I mean, you know. The, I like I like our generation of music as much as the next person, but also too like there's new stuff coming out, right? And, mm -hmm. You know, it's just I just gotta be, you know. I, I like I like I like new things. I mm -hmm. like I like you know something new, something fresh, you know. Which you know, it's. It, I mean, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean I'm gonna be you know I, I'm gonna be like like this is better than this or or this is better than what I had or this is gonna be this is the new the new best or whatever yeah but i mean you know it's just it's all about like uh you know open-mindedness is kind of the i feel like some of the central you know some of the something that we can draw from king of the hill as ironic it may be yeah. like a, i'm a super conservative parent right yeah. that is trying to just you know uh pass on his what he you know his his values and whatnot to his son but at the same time too they may change along the way just because you know that, that that's what that, that's the part about I would say parenting that has uh, say it, there's an aspect to it that kind of keeps me yeah. young almost like mm -hmm. you know I'm not fully caught up on everything but you know when someone mentions something like you know that little kids or you know people in high school you like youths, know of I'll be all like you oh, listen to all this <laughs> I'll be like yeah I don't be like I don't listen to your crap rap music and all that no that's gonna make me sound all old and <laughs> It's gonna make me sound old. It's gonna make me sound yeah. This is definitely like 
Neil, listening to this, this is definitely something you're going to be experiencing soon once Zach gets older. Um, is that something that yeah. you're looking forward to? Are you going to want to try to stay as connected to uh, as connected to his world um, as you know as as he gets older? Oh, no, definitely. I mean, it's just that, like, you know, for me, like, I know that uh, Davidson, your son, is already, he's a teenager already, right? He's, how old is he now? Teen. Fifth, what? Yeah, he's a t- <laughs> Fifteen? Thirteen. Oh, wow. Oh, I was about to say, I was like, wait, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, so, like, right now, I mean, mm. Zach can't really say, like, what he likes or, like, oh, this song is nice, you know? So, I mean, to be very honest, like, I mean, when it comes to music now, I mean, I'm one of those old guys where I'm like, hey, dude, this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but when Davidson, uh, when Davidson did say, it, it's like, you know, you don't want to feel, you want to stay at least connected. But, I mean, I can't really stay connected right now when, you know, he can't, he can't even say what he likes right now. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, for me, I'm going to still right now i'm just gonna be me for right now i'm you know and i'm sure i'm gonna be opening up because i mean there's one thing i don't want to do is like always kind of always disagree with my son if he wants to like something because i mean i feel like if i do that then i feel like there's gonna be a barrier that my son's gonna just close me off because he's like oh my dad doesn't like anything i do or my dad doesn't like that i mean i have to be open with it i mean why not i mean i have such a blast with him doing all this stuff you know like yeah. just you know playing with these toys and you know uh miley helps me out with uh with uh you know him getting involved and stuff and then i end up liking it i mean who would have known i would have liked it you know and then you know like and right now it's all the beat it's all the toddler face stuff you know so i mean uh the the open-mindedness would will come in time Mm -hmm. for me but as of right now i mean if i don't you know if i have an opinion about something if zach can't change my mind yet then i'm still gonna you know i'm still gonna go with my opinion but i'm pretty sure like like davidson said you know as uh, you know, they get older, things change along the way, and uh, you know, and I know things are going to change along the way. Yeah. Definitely, definitely know that's going to happen, just because it's it's happening already. So, I think the the some of the things like as you get older, as they get older, they're going to start say not challenging you on these things, but th- this is the greatest X Y Z, right? Well, you know, <laughs> the, the, say a good one will be, or, or maybe ten years from now, ten. Uh, we'll give it. 14 years from now when he starts getting the sports or whatever he's gonna there's gonna be a general there's gonna be a once in a generation basketball player there's always one right yeah he's gonna be this is the best basketball player ever and i know you know we know we're gonna be like you know from coming from our generation you know we grew up with michael grew up up watching michael jordan right Uh all right i mean we have this generation growing up watching Mm -hmm. lebron right and I mean, even before us, you know, everyone from uh, Bill Russell and, you know, yeah. the generations before us, right, are going to, uh, th- th- these are the one. these are the topics that will, you know, test, I would say, test your open, you know, ev- everyone, I feel like everyone says they're open-minded, but then when push comes to shove, when it really hits ho- home to heart, like, wow, yeah. I, I just thought this is good. This is like, this is yeah. this is what I like the most. And it's being challenged. Then everyone closes up. And that's the part where you got to, you know, be disciplined. Oh, yeah. I think it's it's about having a healthy, a healthy debate about it. Yeah. Is, 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 is probably the best part about it. Not just completely shut down. Like, David, okay, David said. Make your case. There is a there is a situation where your girlfriend's like nephew had said something is like oh this is the best person of like the best rapper or the best basketball player and we, and we just looked at each other like what the fuck like what <laughs> who was oh yeah, yeah yeah he said uh who is it little yachty or something like that I was like, trash I <laughs> so I mean the, the the thing is is that I have to be like you know I'm just like well you know he he, he definitely has. In the, I, I've you want to say something? There's something on the. Do you want to say? What do you want to say? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't completely dismiss his music, like as an entirety. I yeah. think he does come out with music that you know that's that's palatable. What? Uh, he, did he say Little Yachty? Actually, Little Yachty is actually smarter than he than. Oh him. no no Little Pump Little Pump. Oh okay, I was like it, okay that's Little. Little Yachty is different. Like he he's actually smarter yeah. than he perceives. I actually sat next to him. 
during a uh, the Teen Titans Go premiere, and he like there his his bodyguards are like, hey, you can't sit here. I was like, I got here first. If any, I, I stood up to. Him. I was like, I got here first. If you guys want to uh, move me, you're gonna have to move me. You don't even work for the, you know whatever. And they're like, all right, man, he could. Uh, Lady Audie's like, oh yeah, he could stay. <laughs> there you go, Joe. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Oh, you you gonna push me just because no, you're. It, it, it was little pump. It was little pump. Okay, okay. See, it makes more little sense. Pump. <laughs> oh. Little pump. Little pump. So you actually got to, you actually got to speak to him. Uh yeah, well we Sorry. we didn't he was in the he was in the movie, so he was like, Oh my part's coming up but he didn't really like I couldn't I didn't talk to him because the movie was going on, but he's like he'll he'll look over to me, he's like, My part's coming up. I was like, All right, cool man. Look whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he he seems like an okay guy. I'm I'm sure Little Pump also is an okay guy, but uh I don't know. He who who was he comparing who was uh her nephew comparing him to? I can't remember. Uh, but. like Tupac or something like oh. that. No way. I don't, I don't, was he comparing him? I don't even think there, 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 right there. there it is right now. The fuck? No way, guys. There it is right there. No uh. way. One of the we, you were talking about sports. One of the one of the other episodes that I hope you guys watch is uh, the episode where um, Bobby develops a a uh, love for football, and which is which is weird because throughout the series, Bobby has always been this like uh, a march to the beat of a different drum type uh, son. Like anything that Hank Hill would try to instill in him, he'd always want. He'd always do the opposite. He'd always do. Uh, his own thing like I think early on in the series his main goal was to become a stand-up comic versus Hank Hill wanted him to like carry on the uh, carry on the propane and propane accessories salesman <laughs> type thing um, but so that episode where uh, Bobby like enjoys football is a pivotal moment because it's a moment where Bobby and Hank find like some common ground and to the point where Hank uh, feels like this is so important for him to to cater to this so that that he does have a, a connection to his son who he feels like he never had a connection to uh, previously and I think that's you know that's something that uh, you guys are experiencing now and uh, eventually me and Alex will experience you know when we have our own kids that trying to find that trying to find that that common bond what what is what is something that you enjoy that you hope that your sons will uh, your sons will um, enjoy also as they get older um, <clears throat> I think for me is, uh, uh, something I enjoy, just a, just a rat, just, just something, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, anything. Okay. Um, geez. Um, outdoors. Okay. Outdoors. Outdoors. Cause I, I feel like not a lot of kids, uh, not a lot of kids enjoy or, or even see the beauty in what outdoors can lead to. Mm-hmm. You know, like I mean, and I'm not. I'm not talking just wilderness. I'm just. I'm talking about just being outside. Yeah. You know what I mean. <clears throat> I mean, I miss of all this COVID stuff. You know, I know that no one really can go outside, but you can go outside just social distance. I mean, there's still kids that play down the street, you know, which I love seeing because it's like, man, they're. I mean, they can actually say like, yeah, yeah, we play basketball all the time. You know, they get they got a basketball court, they play yeah. all the time, and it, it, it's a, uh, it's that nostalgia factor that I mean that we used to do as kids because you know we didn't we didn't live in a time with all the the tech you know like yeah. we lived in a, i mean there were video games but you couldn't leave your seat because it was connected yeah. you know what i mean you couldn't leave or you couldn't you the only the only type of uh the only type of um multiplayer with friends is they had to come over to your house mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know? I, I love like that I, was, I miss that i loved it I loved it because one one thing it brought together is that it brought together your friends and they would you know they get to know your family too yeah. and you know and it and it just it just built so cool you know like so to speak your network but I mean you didn't really see it as a network we're just like oh you know there's a there's like a, Timmy's little or older sister like you know they're like there's the older brother of medicine picking with us you know and then it's those relationships that you might not even get anymore just because you know it's uh, the online gaming is uh, it's so i mean it's so advanced like you like you can just like uh, the cable guy you can you can play you can play uh, mortal Kombat yeah <laughs> with a friend in vietnam you know exactly like, that that I mean, that, cool. that speech was cool cuz it, it actually came to life and it's so weird it's crazy yeah it came to life and, and it's funny cuz that that movie was in the uh, made back in the 90s and you're like holy crap the stuff that we uh, the stuff that we actually are going through it, it's happening you yeah. know not i mean simpsons not are not the only ones like uh, predicting stuff i mean even movies have like things from like the, from the future that they're actually doing i mean but 
But again, it, it's the out uh, back to your question and your answer is, uh, you know, being outside, just just enjoying the uh, enjoying running outside and all that stuff, regardless if it's like outside of your house or outside in the woods or a thing going camping, just being outside and being like content with the enjoyment of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. being outside, you know, because. You know, I mean, later on in life, you're gonna, you might not like it anymore. And you might just want to stay home inside. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex, uh, with you and your and your dad, like now that you're older, do you guys have a lot of stuff in common? Like, you guys enjoy the same things or enjoy a lot of the same uh, uh, like sports and topics or uh, hobbies? Um, mostly with the sports teams because we, you know, we watched the Lakers growing up. So th- those sports teams. Uh, honestly, he's actually trying to learn the things that I like Mm -hmm. because he wasn't really into video gaming and I'm into Disney. And so he's seeing star Wars and he's seeing all the things that I enjoy. Uh, and he's actually trying to pick it up now, now that he even has a granddaughter, it's, it's even more compounded. So yeah, it's um, like, it's a whole different world for him, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So now that he's fully retired, it's, he's like relearning, um, relearning aspects. Yeah, that's so, awesome. David, I see that. I, I see that in my dad. Yeah. Now that he has his first grandson, he's like he's like a kid again. He's mm-hmm. Dude, doing everything. When when we went yeah. over to your house, you, your your dad just looked so freaking happy. Like it, his face oh, just lights dude. up. He'll he'll like he'll text he'll like uh, call my dad. He's like, hey, my grandson's coming this weekend. He'll be super excited. <laughs> you know what? That's so funny because my you know my dad tells me about that too. He's like, yeah, I talk to my friends and tell them about it. And I'm like, oh, again, and it's your dad, dude. Yeah, it's super it funny. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. He and it, and it's and you know I know he's a, he's he's typically a happy guy all the time. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, but he's just been even extra happier now. You know, it's just like you know he finally. Uh, you know, he finally has a, a grandson, and what he loves the most about it is his dis- distinct trait of my, uh, you know, my son's curly hair. Because mm-hmm. the only person in my family that has curly hair is like that dad. is my dad. <laughs> is my dad. So he, he, like. Like, he, he takes it to heart. He loves it. He, he loves the, you know, he, he just touches his hair. And he just, I love, I love, I love seeing my dad. Like, yeah. And with Davidson, uh, your situation, it's not, it's, you guys aren't that different. D- DJ is like a, a, a you know, like a copy of you. He's a mini of you, you know, like to the point where actually I feel like, I feel like he's going to uh, surpass you in, in, in his talents and everything that he's so good at. And that, you know, that's what you're hoping for, right? That's what I'm hoping for. I hope he uh, takes that lightsaber and strike me down and uh, <laughs> take all my power with it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just just every every day, every year that I see him, or every day I see him, like he's just like, man, this kid is this is Davidson. I bet you this is how Davidson was when he was a kid. You know? Yeah, to, yeah. I mean, they're they're they're. And it's not always it's not a carbon copy by any stretch, but. I think, uh, you know, my situation more is uh, not really like what I wish uh, he would be interested in. But, you know, looking at what he's interested in and, you know, really trying to, you know, figure out why he's interested in it and look at, uh, you know, maybe I'll take some interest in it, too. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's 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 something that it opens doors a little bit. Right. Yeah. It's, it, if, if I didn't have if, if he if he wasn't around then I probably wouldn't be, you know, like, you know, I, I, right, right. I mean, he, he's interested in things that his generation's interested in, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I get to see, I get to see it in real time. Like, Oh, is that what you guys are into? Cool. Like, <laughs> I, was, I remember we had, a, we had like, it used to be like, hey. I remember we had, we, we had a version of that, or we used to have something like that. Yeah. Back in the day. It's like much better refined now. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. all every like every video game, aka every video game, I'm just like, wow, that's like this game, but it's way better now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm astounded. I'm astounded watching him. Like uh, there was one time I was over at your house. We we're about to report record a podcast, and he was playing Fortnite. And I was just watching him, like just amazed at how fast he was building, how fast he was, like all the kills he was getting, and like what there, like right before we left, we went to go grab food. Right before he left, he got he got like first place. I was like, what the fuck? I've never ever ever gotten first place ever, and like in this game, this game, like oh, just man. escapes it's me. It's a generational mm-hmm. thing, man. Yeah, it's just like yeah, dude. It's like he see. It's like he sees the Matrix. Like he's Neo. He's like so it's so different. Cool, it's crazy. It's it's crazy seeing like what they see, and you you don't really understand. You, 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 
Go ahead. You know, one, uh, one of the things uh, that not not to one of the things that's amazing is uh so are you, are you guys familiar with um what's that uh what they're how they're teaching math now right everyone makes fun of it yeah like everyone's dude the, the uh, I'm, of, i mean i don't know i don't know how to do it personally but i saw you it better get like, started neil uh, you better get started <laughs> What is it? Uh, what what what's Long it called? Long division. Yeah. Common Common Core. Common Core. Yeah. Common Core. Mm-hmm. So everyone makes fun of Common Core. They go on, you know, I see it on Facebook, YouTube, just like, oh, there's the person that's teaching Common Core, like with the, and that's how DJs taught math to kind of put a background, right? We're we're taught the side where it's just like, oh yeah, you carry the one, and then you do this, and you're yeah. done, and the guy's like making rice, cooking tea, and all that. And then the person's just like taking a little bit more to explain it all, and all, and by the time he's done, it's like, oh yeah, it's it's how it's messed up how they're teaching kids math now. But the thing is, is that they're teaching them the fundamentals of doing it, and it's something that I wish someone had taught me because DJ can do like they're the example that they do in the memes is like a simple like uh, ten times ten or ten times eleven. But then mm. DJ will do like a thousand twenty four times four hundred twenty six in his head, and like he's envisioning, he's visioning it, like being done in that same matrix, is, and is he can do it faster. Is this what they teach in India? Yeah, it, India. Because I know they're, that they're way they're it, they they still yeah, do yeah, like, yeah. like the abacus and all that. So it's yeah. it, like again, you know, like I, I've I've been I, before. DJ, right? Um, this whole I remember everyone complaining about Common Core and and this the way that their little kids are you know like taught math and all that and I'm just like like seeing it in real life I'm just like man they're it's, it's you can make fun of it but these kids do math in their head way faster than we can yeah <laughs> like it's not it's not, it's 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 not even close. Someone bust out. The, then the, when it gets to the bigger numbers, they're the ones making the rice and making the dinner while we're <laughs> we're trying is to carry it, all our ones. Is it actually stuff. is it actually pretty easy to learn though? It it is easy to learn. It's just making it fast. That's the that's the that's the trick. Yeah, you better you start can, studying. I mean, obviously, it's practical. Where I mean, we're not gonna sit, oh yeah, because we're not going to sit down and then you know have a whole lesson on it. I mean, I'm sure because I mean, um, if this is going to happen to me, I might as well just look it up. Because I mean. Uh, I did not. I, it just clicked to me that you know it's the, that's the stuff that they learn in India and you said China. So I'm like, hey, that I would I would love to like uh, I would have loved like like you said I would have loved to learn that. Yeah. Typically, Indian kids and yeah. Chinese kids are pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. So I mean, yeah. again, again, going, go, going but then back again, to it, it's the uh, the, gen- yeah. the again, it's it's a generational thing that we uh, yeah, yeah. that, that uh, you know, it's 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 something brought to my plate that I'm just like, oh, like, you know, I'm like, I'm not really familiar with this. So, and, and you know, I know how to I, I know how to do math, but when I see math done this way. I have to be like, okay, this is how they do it. Oh, okay, like rather than try to, I know, I, I probably I know some parents that were like just like well i don't know how to do it this way but i do it this way and I'm just like well you know they're, they're probably teaching it this way because i can see it already you know it's it's a little bit it's it's a process it's teaching them the fundamentals but it's yeah it's something that i'm just like like man i need some time to learn this like yeah and it's just it's just multiplication yeah. You know, yeah. and there, there's, you know, and it, again, it goes into like a, it's a, a pride factor, right? You just have to have no pride when you do this. Like parenting, pride. Don't let that don't don't let, don't let that pride get in the way. Mm-hmm. You know, that only that only inhibits growth. I think that's that's kind of my philosophy. And anywhere, I mean, not just parenting, but you know, you put you you put your you put your pride in the way. You know, then you kind of just stay stuck, right? Yeah. Do you think right. Hank Hill, if Hank, if Bobby brought this to Hank Hill's attention, you think he would uh, go through the effort of learning it, or would he be the type of person to just like dismiss it and be like, you know, this is how you do it? I, I already see the conversation in the back alley. It's just like, uh, my school is teaching these kids this thing called Common Core. <laughs> They'll be like, Common Core was invented by the Chinese to, <laughs> to, to, to make our minds uh, to make our minds more susceptible to their satellites. Yep. Their I, wish, I wish my I wish that someone would teach me a common core. <laughs> and then 
Boomhauer is just pretty red. I don't know, man, I'm telling you, he's actually the one that's probably more open minded. Yeah. It's just they just don't He'll understand. He'll be like, oh, yeah, come, yeah, come, come, yeah, yeah, come, 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 you're damn right, Boob Howard. Damn our, damn our government. <laughs> like, kind of looks at just like. <laughs> uh, Alex, Alex and Neil, like uh, since this is your first time watching the show, which characters stood out to you, or which characters did you feel like you related to on an emotional level, or like you know personality wise? Which ones did you guys enjoy watching? Enjoy their stories watching. I only saw that one. Uh, Bobby's Bobby's character, especially when he was trying to get fit for that presidential award. Yeah, uh, he didn't he didn't want to, and his dad thought he was lying. He was like, "Yeah, I'm doing I'm doing something for PE. It's just to play video games." And the dad didn't want to believe him, and then he went into the school. So Bob, and then when he flipped, and he's actually tried to give his all. When he was all about playing video gaming, mm-hmm. and then his dad succumbed to the addiction of video gaming. That, that dynamic, that shift, um, I was like, whoa. Yeah. And, he, and he was doing it for his dad. He was like, look, dad, look what I can do. I can do one push-up or something. He's super excited about it. Yeah, he so, said, I did, I did a pull-up. And you you yeah, lifted your feet up. off the ground. <laughs> I yeah. thought that was great. <laughs> so so you, enjoy, you enjoy the their dynamic, is what you're saying? I did. Yeah. I did. Uh, Neil, uh, for me, I, I feel like I'm a I'm a mixture of a like like a couple characters. Um, like for me, um, Hank, uh, definitely like uh, from what I know, I'll preach until something like some outside thing comes in and I I see it and I'm like, oh, that's not so bad, you know. <laughs> Just kind of like you said, things change. Um, uh, with Bobby. <laughs> What I like to do about Bobby is I like to go against the grain too, like how Bobby kind of does. Yeah. Like he, he hears something about that his dad says, and he's kind of like, "Well, this is," and he tries it. And you know, uh, you know, half the time, half the time things go right, half the time things go wrong. Same thing with me. I mean, I don't get everything right the first time, and then you know, I, I might even have to make it make the same mistake more than three times to actually get it in my head. Like, oh, okay, it makes a lot of sense. Um, the mom, the mom looks just like she's, you know, she, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, what was a what was a, what was a mom's name? Like, Peggy. Peggy. Peggy yeah. Hill. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's Peggy. Peggy. Yeah. It's Peggy. Peggy. Yeah. Yeah, Peggy. Uh, Mom is just you know set in her ways and everything like that, and it's just the 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 interactions between Hank and Peggy are just just hilarious. Like it just kind of it kind of you have her literally saying the right answer in front of Hank, and then Hank kind of goes off in his own way, and then later on he should have listened to her in the (laughs) first place. Yeah, and that's that's basically what a what a true. wife is. Yeah, if you if you watch the episodes, you like the subtle things that Peggy do. Uh, Peggy does it. It will like make you smile because it's just uh, yeah. she's such she's such like all of these characters are so heightened and so um, like. They're, yeah, be- they're, they're be- them out. yeah, they're believable, but to an extent, like I feel like a lot of their a lot of their flaws are just heightened. So you just notice a lot of different things, and I think that's what's the best about the show. That's what's like that's what's best about this the writing that they that they did with mm-hmm. this is that they take all these like idiosyncrasies that each character has and they just uh, amplify it and try to fi- like try to find a way every week to to connect it to their viewers' lives. And I think that that's uh, mm-hmm. what's amazing versus shows like. Um, like Family Guy, where like the comedy is in your face and it's just loud, and which is fine, which is it's in your face, it's just loud and everything. <laughs> like there, there, there's no emotional, no emotional like connection to it. it's all knee jerk reactions to to their jokes. Versus this one, where like it it reels you in with these characters and then hits you with the humor by you know appealing to your personality. And I think that's what I enjoy mm-hmm. about it. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. But hopefully you guys continue watching the show because I do want to have you guys back on and like maybe talk about different different oh, yeah, other different subjects yep. um but it, it, it that that's what i enjoy about it so like um you know when when you're when you meet a person and a lot of the times the first thing first things you ask them is oh what type of shows do you watch or what type of what are your hobbies that's like the quickest and easiest way for you to dissect their personality and and, and um and in 
uh, know the type of person without having to spend too much time with them. Like, um, so like when when someone says, "Yeah, I love The Office," like, all right, I, uh, already gonna be vibing with you. You're <laughs> you're good, best you're friends. Fine. You're but then if if they throw if they throw in King of the Hill, then you're like, all right, we're gonna be friends forever. It's 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 a done deal. <laughs> you know, it's set. You know, that's that's. That's 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 how I, I I put it. So like Office is very like everybody knows the Office, and but if you if you enjoy it, then yes, okay, cool. And the, but if you throw in King of the Hill, you throw in something else. I'm like all right, all right, cool. We're 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 good. We're gonna be we're gonna be friends forever, you know. I mean? <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, I I know I let Alex uh, borrow my Hulu, and it's it's I'm putting it to good use so you can uh, in, get enlightened by the ways of of propane and propane accessories. <laughs> um but yeah. <laughs> it was good it is good yeah enjoy it man enjoy it it's, it, it's fun it's it's like it's you know what it's like it's like um what is it it's like uh the first time going to comic-con or the first time going to coachella or the first time going to <laughs> disneyland or something it's that seeing other mm-hmm. other people's reaction other people's experience with it, it it brings it brings a uh, joy to my life in in some weird way. I don't know why that that that's just a weird. <laughs> thing. I just like say, oh, you're enjoying it too. It's like, see, I knew you would because I know you. I've known you for many years, and I think we're on the same yeah. on the same wavelength, you know. And uh, I think I think honestly, I think for me and Davidson, that's uh, that like those type of connections or those type of interests that we shared actually brought us closer together. Cause when we first met uh, Davidson, you can correct me if I'm wrong. We weren't super close when we first met, right? No man, I was just like, dude, this is quiet. Look at this jerk. <laughs> oh no, he was no jerk for sure. Wow, you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell what, what what he was. You could wait. You couldn't tell what he was. What? You couldn't tell what he was. You'd be like, oh, this is Jezzer. I was like, hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even look at him now. Even like, hi. like Jez wasn't hi. as loud as I've heard to know him when we first met. Like yeah. we were, he was talking normal volume, and it was like, uh, and now it's just like you know, it's blowing my ears off. Different the monster and, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's different. But I mean, that that's that that's what happens when you get to know somebody. Yeah. You open up a little bit, and you know what? And if you're still there, chilling with them, they you like them for some way. For yeah, some I, way I like. I like for, I for me and Davidson. I like to go back to a certain situation. Do, Davidson, do you remember the first time we went to Sunset Terrace in, in Thousand Oaks? Whoa, Sunset Terrace! You mean the only time? <laughs> the oh no, no, we went. The we only went another time. time. Yeah, but there's the first time we went, and it, our, one of our main goals is like to go out there and have some fun and like meet some people, and. Like you were dancing, you're killing on the dance floor, doing your little shuffle thing. Cause shuffling was like really big back then. And then you're like, "Oh, go get me, go get me a beer." And then I came back with like a a butt. Uh, no, no, but, go get us some beer. Go get go us get some beer. beer. I was in compan. Huh? <laughs> go get <laughs> us some beer. Let's get some beers. Yeah, and I came back with like that regular Budweiser, and you're like, "What the?" Back with Budweisers, I'm just like, "What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> are these?" <laughs> Um, Bud Weiser. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then that that was like that was like <laughs> the old me, like versus now, where I'd be like uh, throwing freaking shots in front of David's and like keep drinking, keep drinking. Or what was that one time when we went? Uh, Neil, you were there when we went to. Uh, we were in downtown LA for someone's birthday. I can't remember whose birthday it was. I think that was for New Year's, wasn't it? No, was that the one where I was on the floor? No, wait. And that, that, that was the same. Uh, no, no. no, no, no. That was a different night. night. It was it was one where we we, we rented a hotel. Yeah, that was that was for Ed's birthday that you were on for. Oh no, that was Ed's birthday. Different time. Yeah, it was a different time. It was a time when Davidson took like this plastic bottle of 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 uh, what was it? It was uh, Fireball. Fireball, and he was just drinking out of the bottle to the point where he kept drinking it, and he didn't like at. Like at no point in time was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. And then we were leaving for the club. We got to the club. I had to go with Ed to get shoes because they wouldn't let us in. And then you, you, I was there. I was there. I was you there. might. I think that was the same night. No, it wasn't the same night. I no, it wasn't the same sure. night. But okay. But oh no, no, never mind. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that now. You, Miley, yes. you, Red Miley, Star. Davidson, and Danielle went inside. I went to Target with Ed. Came back and they, they're like, oh, Davidson's yeah. getting kicked out because he's throwing up in the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I remember that night I, I totally remember that night I remember what I wore now I, I know exactly <laughs> I, remember, I remember that night and we're like 
I think they're like, hey, they're gonna go get him. He's in the bathroom throwing up. I was like, <laughs> what? We just got, we just got here. Like, I'll admit now well, that's that. That's what I was saying too when I was on the in the we bathroom. Just got, <laughs> just got here. <laughs> just I'll say this now. I, I I feel a little responsible for that situation, but I don't know how. But okay, I'll, I feel like I don't know if oh. I kept pushing the bottle in front of you. Just keep drinking, man. But like you were holding it together all the way up until oh, the club. Yeah, but that that was that like that's like the the opposites of the coin. I remember how I was yeah. when uh, Davidson we went to Sunset Terrace, and then how I how I was then. It was just like two different yeah. two different oh. people. Oh. Oh, the, how the turns have tabled. Oh, how the turns have tabled. <laughs> Turn tables. I do, I do miss <laughs> the situations. But you guys, thank you so much for joining me, or uh, joining us on our podcast. We hope that you yeah. come back again. We'll find, like, I've been, hopefully when I schedule out this, uh, uh, this voice actor, you guys can come on and we can talk to him and interview him because that'd be really fun. Gave the way yeah. that was yeah. Um, but uh, cool. hopefully you guys keep watching because you know it's gonna be fun. I hope you guys enjoy the podcast. We are the Narrow Urethra Podcast, uh, King of the Hill centric, I guess, or King of the Hill themed, but not really connected to King of the Hill. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for joining, and hope you guys listen. Hit that subscribe button so uh, you can know when we get a new episode up. And uh, here's a little message from our sponsors, and goodbye.